Demonstrators in the streets of Denmark's capital, keeping up protests that led to the collapse of the country's ruling coalition. At the dispute centre, a name tarnished during the financial crisis. Um, we think that Goldman Sachs are the worst people on the market because we've seen them being a part of creating the economic crisis around the world. Protesters are angry about Goldman Sachs's $1.5 billion investment in state-owned utility, Dong Energy. Even though Goldman Sachs is only going to get 18% of the company, it's also going to get veto rights over some areas, and some voters are concerned about where it's going to pay tax. As details emerged, an online petition against the investment gathered nearly 200,000 signatures in a country of just 5.5 million. The Socialist People's Party left the three-party coalition, and centre-left Prime Minister Hella Torning schmidt known outside Denmark for a very famous selfie, was left scrambling to form a cabinet, her popularity sliding. The perception is that this is a red government that are implementing blue pol politics. And I think that this whole Goldman Sachs story came on, really came on top of a number of other things. Goldman Sachs says it's committed to its investment in Dong and will comply with tax laws in all relevant jurisdictions. One thing seems certain though, governments in this part of the world will be a lot more aware of the public relations implications of who they do business with. And David is in Copenhagen now for us. So the, uh, the Danish leader, made famous, of course, by that uh, selfie, uh, David, uh, has lost the Socialist People's Party from her coalition. Six ministers have left as a result of the collapse here. So where does this leave the government in Copenhagen? Well, she's going to have to come up with another six ministers, including the foreign ministers, Anna. Um, we're expecting to get the details of that sometime today. Some of the names are already leaking out, but the irony of this whole situation means that it might become easier for her to actually implement policy because we're left with two coalition members, uh, and both of those parties are used to being in coalitions together. They've worked before. So now that the, uh, the more left-leaning uh, party has actually left that three way coalition, it just might become easier for uh, Hella Torning Schmidt to actually enact policy. But at the same time, this whole affair has hurt her popularity and the popularity of her government leading up to elections next year. This is a government, as we heard the professor just saying, which is supposed to be a centre-left government, but the perception is that it's putting into centre-right policies. It's extended the retirement age. It's been privatising utilities. Uh, it's also means testing certain benefits. These have all been policies which have alienated voters and that's a longer term problem uh, for the Prime Minister. And how has Goldman Sachs responded to all of this then, David? Well, you know, in the report there was always this, um, this aspect about the veto that Goldman Sachs was potentially going to have. That veto uh, is in there, the government is arguing, simply because if you're a minority investor in an unlisted company, you need some sort of protection to make sure that that unlisted company doesn't change its longer-term strategy. Goldman Sachs has said it is going to support Dong Energy's longer-term strategy. And with regard to the tax situation, they've also said that they will comply with and continue to comply with all applicable tax laws in Denmark, Luxembourg, the United States and all relevant jurisdictions. Anna. David, thank you. David Tweed reporting for us there from Copenhagen.